Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene's.com Machine Embroidery Art. I am so excited to be releasing my new tutorials for beginners on PE Design 10. I created these tutorials to be viewed as a course. In other words, start with lesson one and work your way up to 18, 19, or 20 before you start skipping around to the more advanced tutorials so that you will have a base of knowledge upon which to build. One of the first things that I want to emphasize though is from the beginning you need to start thinking in millimeters. I know a lot of uh, digitizers they think in inches and uh, and inches are fine if you're trying to size something because your customer says they want a uh, two inch design in which case you can go in the upper left hand corner and that's your toggle for millimeters and inches so you can have it in inches and then you can uh, measure how uh, big you want your design that's about two inches and then when you start to digitize you want to go back into the millimeter mode so that when you are talking about uh, not just for thread length because you know a, a stitch wants to be less than uh, 10 millimeters and longer than one millimeter but also for your uh, sewing densities and uh, your pull compensation everything that goes along with digitizing all the professionals will be talking in millimeters not inches so start that right away the next thing I want to emphasize is get your quick access toolbar set up. The more you digitize, the more annoyed you're going to be getting by having to switch to all these different tabs and looking for your most frequently used tools. For instance, when I click on this text, I can see without clicking on anything that it's a, uh, a true type font, Bologna and that it's red instead of having to go to the text tab and open it up and find this information out. So all of your most frequently used tools put on your quick access toolbar and I will explain that in the first lesson. Uh, for instance, uh, if you're going to want to duplicate, uh, you click on it, right click it, and then just click add to the quick access toolbar and there it is so that if I want to duplicate this I can now, instead of having to, if I'm on, say, this tab here, uh, and I don't see the duplicate, I know it's here, and I can duplicate it. Another thing that I need you to set up from the very start is the ability to see your thread trims. You can only see that in the stitch mode. Now, here you have your different views. Uh, and I'll explain that in another lesson but this one here that's your thread or your uh, stitch mode this is your realistic preview but we want the stitch view and that way we'll be able to see wherever these little scissors are we know the machine is going to stop and trim and stop and trim they're only available to see if you are in the multi-needle machine mode and you will find that under your design setting and you have to have multi-needle machine checked even if you're using a single machine you still want to be able to see those thread trims and with the output I have my threads uh, are not going to trim unless they're at least two millimeters long you can set it shorter or longer if you like but the most important thing is that you have your multi-needle machine checked and I'll say cancel because I already have that because I use this design page setting so often I have it also on my quick access toolbar Once you have your multi-needle machine checked, you must also go to the View tab and make sure View Thread Trimming is checked because if it's not, your scissors are gone. So two things for viewing your trims. Your uh, multi-needle machine under Design Settings and under the View tab, View Thread Trimming. There's one more thing that I want to emphasize that you get used to doing and using from the beginning is don't forget about this little guy in the upper right hand corner. 
that is your instruction manual and your check for updates too but mainly the manual as long as I've been doing this I still go back to my manual all the time you just go to your index you select the subject that uh, uh, that you're looking for we'll say we're going to be uh, centering so we'll just go to centering we'll click on the page number and it tells us how to center and all the information on that it's a wealth of information and you should always have it handy so I want to wish you good luck and taking this course start from lesson one and you'll build your knowledge and by the time you finish suffering through all these lessons you will uh, have all the knowledge you need to turn out some beautiful designs